Many of us are familiar with the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease, the tremors in the hands, the stooped posture, and the shuffling gait when the patient walks. But not as many of us are aware of the non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease that can range from cognitive decline to gastrointestinal difficulties. And so in my research lab at the UT Health School of Dentistry, we're investigating the oral health symptoms that are specific to patients with Parkinson's disease. And understandably, you can envision that hand tremors make it very difficult for them to maintain their oral hygiene, and therefore they have an increased rate of cavities and periodontal disease. But insidiously, uh, the worst oral health symptom they can have is dysphagia, or difficulty swallowing. And about half to even three quarters of patients with Parkinson's disease will develop dysphagia during their disease. Research shows us that patients pass away from dysphagia on average of two years after it begins. And this is either from malnutrition or aspiration pneumonia, which is swallowing the oral bacteria normally living in our mouths into their lungs instead of to their stomachs. And so dysphagia changes radically the life of a patient with Parkinson's disease. One who used to enjoy steak and potatoes uh, now is avoiding choking hazards like cheese and peanuts, and in their final days subsists only on a liquid diet. Also because of swallowing difficulties, they are constantly drooling and need a handkerchief or a spittle cup. And this, of course, has social ramifications. They no longer go out to eat with friends and it affects their voice. And so their social relationships they once enjoyed are largely destroyed. And so what can we do about dysphagia? Well, there are no surgeries and no medicines that can prevent the progression of dysphagia. But in my research lab, we are looking at measuring the oral bacteria in the mouths of patients with and without dysphagia to see if we can predict which patients are at greatest risk of aspiration pneumonia. So we measure the specific kind and quantity of these oral bacteria, and we are finding that the composition of all the bacteria in the mouths of patients with dysphagia differs from those without. And if we can find those culprits that are most likely to cause aspiration pneumonia, this is a way to predict and prevent death by aspiration pneumonia, alerting the caregiver and the provider to do what they can. As a donor, you can consider supporting this project to collect and measure the oral bacteria in the patients to determine which patient is most likely to be at risk of aspiration pneumonia, saving a life.